going on everybody and welcome back to the channel now today all right we are back with another reaction here in 2023 my first reaction video that i'm actually doing here in the year of 2020 23 and we've got a cricket raz video you wouldn't want to start the year any other way than the great man himself so we have got a video that has been I've been told to react to this like so many damn times, but I, I I was going to when it first came out and then I kind of thought to myself that, you know, it was really recent, you know, after he just passed away and, um, you know, rest in peace to the man Andrew Simons too, by the way, but, you know, it was just after he had passed away and I kind of didn't want to do a reaction video on someone who had just passed and, you know, monetize it. It just felt morally wrong from my behalf. So I have waited some time um, and I have been told that it, it, it is quite a wholesome video in the end. So, hey, we are here with 90% of Indian players are lazy. Now, you can understand where the controversy comes from. <laughs> Obviously, we know the whole backstory with him and Harbhajan Singh. That was a... An interesting time to, to be alive in the cricket world, but um, hey, we're going to hop straight into it. If you guys are new, subscribe, leave a like. If you've got anything else to me to react to, drop it in the comments. Let's go. And what did you make of the young Indian talent that you've seen? It's good. Oh, there's plenty of it there, but 90% of your Indian players are lazy. Oh, boy. This is Andrew <laughs> Just two years after the monkey gets scandal. Yeah. Talking about Indians. Yes, Harbhajan. Today's story is going to be a very unique journey, which will start with the monkey get scandal mm. and will end on this video. A video that was taken when Andrew Simons had lost everything. His career, his position and his reputation. Today, let's understand the journey of a broken man. It is 2008. Andrew Simons has just reported Harbhajan Singh for calling him a monkey. Mm. And match referee Mike Proctor has handed Bhaji a three-match ban as a punishment. Mm. This is in effect calling Bhaji a criminal and Tendulkar a liar. Mm. Simons, with the backing of his captain Ponting, along with most of his team and board, has won the fight. But this is much more than a simple victory for Simons. This is a validation of his way of cricket. The way that had made him an England-born Australian to Whoa, refuse an invitation to play in England. Yeah, don't the not tell them that. 90, Jeez. The way that was the hope of his parents for a boy yeah. whom they had adopted at just six weeks old. Mm. I've realised how lucky I am to have the parents that gave me the opportunities. Like they made huge sacrifices in their own careers mm. to to get me and my brother and sister into environments where we could pursue our dreams. The only reason I applied for Australia is because they did that. And then one day, when his dreams did come true, he went on to create his own personal style of cricket. Go big or go home. After Australian greats. Um, you know, when I first played, I played in a pretty uncompromising era. You know, I played with a lot of the old-fashioned cricketers. Mm. And um, that sort of rubbed off on me, you know. When I, when I first played, I used to get the beer out of the fridge and bring it to the, to the senior players mm. and that sort of thing. And I tell the young players that now, they don't believe me, but that was, <laughs> that was how it was. And the way that they played in the middle was uncompromising, you know. If someone was hurt, that was that was a weakness to the opposition, and that's where you went in both feet, you know. That was one of my roles in the side as well. You know, um, myself and Matty Hayden who sometimes would gang up on someone away. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. <laughs> All right, last pause of the video, but that is how you know we're talking about cricket from back in the day. Like, if you said this now, that me and a player were ganging up on the opposition player, bro, they're going to try and suspend you for that. <laughs> That's how soft the world is now that you'll get banned for something like that. But that actually used to be a thing. Like, you actually used to pick guys who could sledge the best. And, like, Roy Simons was one of those guys early, wasn't he? Like, you would pick him because you know he's going to get under the feathers of the opposition as well and, and talk a bit of smack. So... I love that. I love that. Gang up on someone <laughs> a way of it's like a gang fight. Get another wicket or intimidate someone or put something in their mind yeah. for the Just rest take, of the Put them off edge. Like that, you know? it was always, there was always a meaning to it. There was always a mm. reason for it. This was the Andrew Simons way. Always giving it your all. Never compromising and never stopping. For whom the game was all that mattered. And winning came about everything else. Yes, Today, Roy! Him and everything that he stood for 
had been brought under attack mm. and all of his people had stood by him in support his style of cricket had won and then everything came crashing down BCCI filed an appeal against the judgment and the appeals commissioner John Hansen cancelled the test ban on Harbhajan mm. then as if to make a point he criticized Simons for swearing at Harbhajan after Bhaji did a friendly gesture towards Bretley now i'm going to be absolutely clear about this Harbhajan Sachin and most of senior indian players have come out and clarified Bhaji was saying maki and not monkey everything that followed what well, um just for for anyone i don't know if he's about to explain it to me but what does marquee mean does that have any merit to it? like what does that actually mean like is that a word that's used on the cricket field very often or like i i, I don't know i've never heard the word before there was more than a misunderstanding um, that had been blown out of proportion yeah no but no doubt it was but Simons, yeah at that moment any sort of explanation was nothing more than a cover up mm. he truly believed in what he had heard well that's Hence, fair enough i mean you can't had been a slap a slap that was turned into a stab when he started hearing rumors mm. his own board was throwing him under the bus the grapevine was australian cricketing board had bowed down to the bcci pressure and yep. now they were blaming simon yep. for putting them in an embarrassing position yep. in simon size mm-hmm. this was betrayal we won't his forget team, his people had gone to war for him mm. they had even won but all of it was just thrown away he and his teammates had been humiliated in front of the world his way trampled on the ground his trust gone up in smoke all while being unable to do anything about it he finally broke down nothing mattered to him anymore not his career not his future not his cricket he had lost everything so he decided to lose himself too in a bottle of alcohol days after days it would have been a bit more days, than just one bottle he kept on but, trying uh... to dull out everything till one day when he got a call he was being invited to play in the indian premier league yes sir can you imagine that Can you imagine being disgraced by your enemy and then being asked to go and play for them? Yeah, no. Nah, imagine- I I don't know about that. He he's saying it's humiliation. I I feel like I like I'm Roy, I'm not knowing him personally obviously, but you know, I feel like he would have been the type of guy to say effort, bring it on. I'm going to go there and show the entire country what I can bloody do. And he did exactly that when he went there. How many games did he play? Did he play for the uh Deccan Chargers, I think, maybe? Humiliation. He nearly reflexively <laughs> said no, but then he heard the news. Big money, Most baby. Most of his teammates had agreed. Yeah. For a few weeks of work, IPL was willing to give them a minimum payment that was equivalent to their total yeah, the annual year. payment mm-hmm. in Australia. That's not even counting the extra money that they could get from the auction. Yeah. His board, his team, well, even some Khan? of his friends had said yes. So, why should he hold on to his principles? He went and said yes. Is that and Mitchell Johnson? Days, he had his answer. He MJ had been auctioned for 5.4 crores. Beautiful. The highest amount that year yeah. for an overseas player. Pretty by four. That just a month back was, was deriding it? and insulting him. Wait, was it Today, Kings 11? They were willing to pay him through the roof. Trying to see his cricket. Yeah. A nation that had gone to war against him yeah. was now going to cheer for him. Yeah. That year, even though he just played in four matches. Yeah. The thundering applause that he got as soon as he walked onto pitch caused even him to be shocked in disbelief. This adulation, this applause, was only and only because his talent mm. was recognized here. Woo! His achievements admired, his love for cricket Facts. respected, and just the way he would have done it in nation that loved cricket. Yeah, he would have smacked in everything. All forms, in all its glory, that year, in spite of his team coming in last, damn, he was okay. <laughs> Still not speaking much, mind you, but mixing along with Indian youngsters. Mm. He was more than happy yeah, to good. avoid anything. Oh, oh, that's right, of course. He played for the Mumbai Indians at one point because he, I remember the story that he played with, um, you know, he was good friends with uh, Yuzi Chahal. That's right. Okay, it's coming back he to me now. He was doing oh. fine. But the hurt, it hadn't gone away. The pain still yeah. remained. And as he went back to play for his country, it started coming to the surface. 30th August 2008 he would be sent back home from Bangladesh really? for missing a compulsory team meeting he had gone fishing yeah and then captain michael clark a long time friend of simon Woo! Mandu, went on to say their main concern was andrew's commitment Yo. his efforts called into question simon quickly jumped back 
It's funny what money can do to people. Oh, my friend is now jealous of my idea. Yo, okay, Roy. Hey, Andrew, you're not going to talk about my father like that, okay? Simon's punishment would go on for two Damn. months, but even after returning, first he would get into a pub brawl That's in Brisbane. Right. That's and right. Then, while being completely do do? intoxicated, he would go on to call the New Zealand cricketer Brendan hey, BJ a piece of in an actual interview. Oh this, no. The third offense. Oh no, not Brendan. Seven months. It would result in a four thousand oh, dollars fine, right, that's instructions right. to work yeah. with a psychologist, and being yeah. indefinitely banned until indefinitely he was definitely banned. To successfully rehabilitated. Jesus, what the, the last heck? Line meant he would not appear in the series against New Zealand yeah. and South Africa. And though he would be called against the ODI series in Pakistan, didn't he get picked. Though, did he dropped mm. from the two thousand and nine mm. Ashes. This was an indignation, and Simons responded. By going to the IPL, scoring 249 runs in just eight matches. Yes, sir. In the finals, hitting a hard for 33, taking two wickets, yeah, and winning the IPL that year. For the deck and charges, wasn't it? His board on notice. I Ooh. am good enough. That's right, baby. The board responded by including his name in the upcoming T20 yeah. World Cup. Yeah, isn't World isn't Cup. isn't that funny? Isn't that just hilarious that the cricket board of Australia will, you know, they wanted nothing to do with Andrew Simons. They said, "Nah, your commitment's gone. Nah, this is done. We don't give a shit." You know, until you're you're indefinitely banned. And then he goes over to the IPL where you know he's under a bit of pressure with the money that he's been bought for and and all of that, but. He dominates there, and then all of a sudden, it's like the country wants him back. That you know, the team's like, "Oh, please, we need you back. We need you to play. We don't care about your issues anymore. As long as you're playing well, then come back." I find that a little bit, uh, a little bit embarrassing from Cricket Australia's behalf. To be honest, I mean, Cricket Australia has unfortunately been known as a board that has done this quite often, throwing players under the bus and then bringing them back and using them when you actually need them. It's it's quite disgusting, but. Unfortunately, it's just the power of higher-up people who uh, get to control that sort of stuff. For which the entire Australian delegation flew to England mm. with Simons returning back. I wouldn't have talked to any of them. Departure. He had been sent home for Damn. getting drunk and creating a scene. In Wait, hold on. Dinner. Was that at just the World Cup? to England with Simons returning Damn. back within a week of his departure. He had been sent home for getting drunk and creating <laughs> a scene in an official dinner. Oh, brother. This was the last straw as Simons was being put on a plane it wasn't clark who came out to talk to the Michael? press this time it was ricky ponting yeah. the same ponting that had stood by him that's how you know it was um, serious he even gone on to publicly criticize his own board yeah as he should have they treated Simons, facts who 10 years back had fought with his entire cricket board to get simons to debut mm. on his team that ponting today said He's let himself down. Yeah, He's true. let his teammates down. And he has let Cricket Australia down. Mm. There was politics. There was rules that had been broken. There was side contracts. There was lots of other things. I don't know if you guys can hear the wind. I'm Hopefully my microphone does not pick up any of this wind. But, yeah. I'm just going to continue and hopefully you can't hear it. My bad. Sort of feeling in that I'm in a fucking hurricane out here. I was, used to. It was, I was finding it difficult to enjoy myself in that environment. Which was leading me to drink. Yeah. And then Bro, okay. I, I don't want to keep pausing because of the wind, but I don't want to have to watch the entire video and then edit the rest of it out, so Okay, we're gonna continue on. Sensible decision. I was I was probably uh, the bearings were starting to wear in the wheels, you know, mm. the wheel gonna fly off at some point and it did. But it got to the point where I didn't want to be in the side. Mm. And that was it. Despite being guaranteed another chance if he behaved Simons was done. Yeah. He was done with Cricket Australia. He didn't even bother announcing his name. <laughs> he just left. He just got up, went to his home in the Australian Outback. And never was heard from. And disappeared. Yep. For a total of six months. Bro, just went fishing for about six months. the world saw him now, his struggle had taught him a few things. Yeah. For the last two years, while playing for the Deccan Chargers, while forcing youngsters to hit the gym after practice, Yay. working on their fitness, As he should. even forcefully taking away their newspapers at airports, huh. so that they would talk to each other. Yeah, I like that. that. Reaffirmed a simple fact: his way of cricket wasn't wrong. His giving everything, never compromising anything to win mm. play style, Fact. would still achieve results. With the IPL trophy replica sitting in his drawing room hey. as proof, so he would still play. He would play his style of cricket, but not for his country anymore. Mm. For himself. 
for his love of cricket mm. and so it began an ipl year tournament there giving it his all of each the time Mumbai. and each time holding himself to the highest of standards mm. and while doing his best holding everyone around him mm. to his standard too and so came the statement 90% of your indian players are lazy you can you just look at them as physical specimens and you think terrific talent but not fit enough not strong enough and that's this laziness mm. you know, hey they're and not, they're not actually no got physical but they're not very physical they're not aggressive people they're not physical people but i'm talking about yeah. in your attitude towards yeah. your training you know what i mean like i'm going to get up early this morning and i'm going to go to the gym all right and you know before training i'm going to go to the gym after training mm. but you know if i took it to that next level um i think it, i think you'd see some amazing changes and maybe even a dominance in world cricket and right on the effing money right there i mean obviously look players were as fit as they were it was different generations and stuff but what that when did he say that 2009 2010 yeah i mean they won the world cup the next year obviously it wasn't because andrew simons called them all unfit that's not the reason things changed but you can't say that it didn't play a, at least a tiny piece of a role of just saying okay you know maybe we all should start getting fitter and stronger and dedicating more time to being better versions of athletes and now you see they are in world dominance when the, most of them are all fitter so hey this it was on the money about it i choose to remember andrew simons hey. someone passionate someone flawed who was willing to give nothing oh. take nothing speak little but do the needful and the happiest when roaming about the outbacks of australia yeah. with his friends and family yeah the older i got sure. the more homesick i used to get i get homesick now being away from home only takes me a few days you know in my spare time i was always up um, in the north on the farm with the women mates you know mm. we'd have weeks and weeks of fun and you know just just being away from everyone no one can get me on the telephone there's only one or oh, there's two telephone numbers that people can get me on there and they're both house numbers they're home so phone i'm living there so <laughs> i'm freeze a bird hey i look at the tv or i see something on the back of the newspaper and i don't want to be there anymore you know what i mean i don't get that oh, i wish i was there for you. Mm. i really enjoy being at home like and being with my mates and the family that's had been it's what matters. I haven't had for you know a good part of my life and you know yeah. i've had some choice and but now i'm happy andrew simons a principled man hey. who despite being broken found happiness thank you for watching this Aye. video Hope you have a good day. Thank you for watching. Hey, just um, for, yeah, I, I I just got goosebumps um, reading this end part in loving memory. It just just makes all. I just <laughs> I got so much goosebumps all over my body from reading that. It's man, it's still it, it just you just still is so tragic that you know of him to pass away and you know being around the same time around when Warney had passed as well. It was just a uh, yeah I'll never forget those periods of time and, and I think where we all were and um, yeah I mean firstly just rest in peace to, to Roy just one, one of an absolute kind a, a legend an absolute king um, and, and was a terrific video again here put together by the man cricket Raz I, I did love this video um, and yeah really well put together obviously look you can't put everything any story about it and um, you know you don't you can't know everything and and what was actually said or did you know because Roy might have heard it his way and that's just how we are as humans he may have heard it that way some others may have heard it that way some others didn't it's just look it's it's in the past but um hey good stuff right here subscribe if you guys are new leave a like and you know what comment down below your favorite Andrew Simons moment hey I hope we all enjoyed and I'll see everyone in the next one